The State of the State speech basically coincided with the release of DeWine's third budget. I talked about it with the director of the Ohio Office of Budget and Management, Kim Mernix. Now, if you take just the general revenue fund spending, this budget is a 12.7% increase from the last budget that Governor DeWine proposed. Why is there such a big increase here? So we've seen additional growth in our general revenue funds over the past two years. We have budgeted conservatively, so we have a significant balance in the state's general fund right now that we consider to be that accumulated cash balance to invest in some of these big one-time projects, including the Economic Development Fund, including innovation hubs, including um, some of the investments in the um, safety projects that we talked about and to upgrade our veterans homes. We have two veterans homes here in the state of Ohio that um, really need to be improved to ensure that they serve those veterans that we value and we need to make sure that we are doing everything we can to make their um, lives as good as possible. Governor DeWine has proposed eliminating the state sales tax on baby items like yes. car seats and diapers and that sort of thing. The budget estimates that will cost the state around $16 million. So what kind of tax growth do you expect knowing that that at least is in there? So our baseline um, revenue projection on, on our general fund, which is mostly, again, sales and income taxes, is a modest 2% in from fiscal year 23 to 24 and then 5% from 24 to 25. So it is a conservative, moderate growth forecast. We want to make sure that we always project and very conservatively to make sure that we have the resources to actually fund the budget and that those revenues materialize. Um, and so we, and, and again, that's mostly sales taxes and income taxes. It is, it is growth over the past biennium, but what you see is we're kind of re Base, we're reestablishing what our new baseline is. And we're using what was accumulated cash for one-time purposes. It's really important that we have a structurally balanced budget, that revenues that come in in a given year are used for um, the priorities in, in that given year so that we don't get into a structurally imbalanced situation where we are spending more money than is coming in on ongoing projects. So we. Do everything We do everything in this budget to ensure that we are carefully constructed to not hit a fiscal cliff in the future. It looks like there's around $14.5 billion for K-12 education in this. Does that fully fund the FAIR school funding plan, the Cup patterson formula that was started to be phased in two years ago, it wasn't fully funded, as well as the expansion of the EdChoice income-based voucher program? That's right. It In this budget, they... Phase in of the Cup Patterson plan, the General Assembly set out a plan for a six year phase in. Um, the last budget was the first two years. So this budget is the second two years, years three and four of that six year phase in. And we've incorporated that into the governor's executive budget proposal, along with the additional school choice options. We want to ensure that every family is able to find that best fit. We know that kids are not one size fits all. And so we wanna make sure that we have robust choices for all families across Ohio. What's the estimate on the increases in that EdChoice program? Because this will allow EdChoice vouchers up to 400% of the federal poverty level, which is around $120,000 a year for a family of four. What's the estimate on how many families are gonna take advantage of that? We've estimated that that could increase the um, EdChoice expansion program enrollment by around 20 to 25%. DeWine said in the State of the State speech, too, that there will be a new Department of Children and Youth that will consolidate the work of six different agencies. Will it just bring in people who are already at those agencies, or will more people be hired and, and potentially more state employees and more administration? Well, the governor's plan is to bring together those programs and people across, you know, more than six state agencies, boards, and commissions into a single focused agency, focused on our kids. Right now, the directors of those agencies have, have a lot of priorities and some, you know, they have a slice of that focused on children, but that's not enough. We want there to be a single director, a single staff who are working together, coordinating. We should see more efficiencies long-term from bringing this work together. DeWine's speech was a lot about mental health and addiction, talking mm -hmm. about getting rid of the stigma on seeking treatment and that sort of thing. How 
What, what kind of spending is in this budget in terms of the money that is being put toward this issue? This um, budget, Karen, in addition to kind of the continuing work of the Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services, this budget uses some of that one-time money that I talked about that we have in our general fund to create the State of Ohio Action for Resiliency or the SOAR network. And that will be a network of researchers who will really dig into what are the best practices, what is the best um, clinical interventions that we can provide to assist um, those that are struggling. We want there to be a investment in research for mental health and addiction that is similar to the research we've seen um, in physical health, such as in, in cancer or, or heart research, where we know that, that individuals aren't, they're not cookie cutters. And we wanna make sure that we are using um, and, and establishing what works for different people so that every Ohioan can be productive members of our community and really reach their fullest potential. So this budget really, really does focus on mental health. It also focuses on building out our, our system of, um, you know, the, the, the facilities, the, the structures. The workforce? And the workforce. So it increases capacity on the workforce side and on the facility side, and especially again in, in the area of kids' behavioral health. So there's a lot of funding in here on mental health research programs. Mm -hmm. There's money for low-income kids to go to college, the Ed Choice expansion, mm -hmm. uh, affordable housing credits, which we didn't even talk about, the child deduction, elimination of the state sales tax on baby items, all of this. So how is this all sustainable? This is sustainable, Karen, because we are using one-time resources for some of these um, one-time investments, but that will have long-term benefits for all Ohioans. And we have, again, made sure that we are structurally balanced. So for any of those ongoing priorities, the revenues are available in that year for the, the, the spending on the programs within that year. And um, we're able to do that by carefully constructing this budget and keeping keeping laser focused on the long term. You talked about the surplus. Is it fair to say where the surplus money is going to one specific area or is it being spread out throughout the budget? It is on kind of a, a short list of, of those major priorities, including the All Ohio Future Fund for development for career tech facilities, um, which we also didn't talk yeah. about is a major focus of, of the governor's budget is to ensure that our kids in K-12 and in um, community colleges, students are being um, able to access programs for those high-tech skill development for the future. It also invests in innovation hubs um, outside of the three C's, so in, in some of our other communities, um, so that we can encourage innovation and, and work in collaboration with our universities in those communities. It also invests um, in our H2 Ohio program and ensuring that we have clean water and it, it expands H2 Ohio to the whole state through a new rivers initiative. So that we're really excited about that too. It invests in our veterans homes and it invests in improving rail crossing safety at all around our state where we, you know, have roads and, and rail crossings that are just, you know, safety um, concerns right now. So that will bring in additional um, federal infrastructure dollars as well. So it is, it is a budget that is built, again, on a very strong foundation. The state, for the first time in more than 40 years, has a AAA credit rating, and that is because we have demonstrated that our fiscal house is in order 